Hey everybody, it's Peter from Bradford Kia and welcome to our live video series, This is a Risk for Me. I'm talking about a car that most of you have never heard of and I'm comparing it to a Kia Seltos. However, if you're interested in the Kia Seltos, this might be useful for you. And if you're coming from a previous Kia product and considering upgrading, this also might be a good video for you. So I've titled it maybe not appropriately for you and that might hurt me in my view count. But here we are, we're ready to have some fun. We're gonna talk about one of my favorite Kias ever. And we're going to do that in a few minutes here. So if you're watching and you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to the three-minute mark. That's where we're going to dig into both of these cars. And uh, if you are watching live, stick around. We're going to talk about a couple things. I just want to show you how to join us live if you want to. So let me just flip over here. We'll go to my uh, computer screen, which I've jammed in the corner here in this table. I should move this table out. You don't need to know this. You need to see this right here on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, you're probably already there. Search for Bradford Kia. We look like this. Uh, hit refresh at exactly 2 o'clock, which is right now, 2 o'clock Eastern time, and you will see, oftentimes, the live video. We've been on a nice little streak here where the live video shows up on the homepage. Uh, if it's not here on the homepage, just click the videos tab right up there. Uh, it'll be the first video there. So you're just looking for this little live tab there. You're going to click that, and now ooh, we get to watch, uh, what is this? IPD, the Volvo Specialists. Ooh, those are nice Volvos. Cool. Skip ad. Okay. Anyways, uh, we're going to skip that, and I'm just going to blow it up. We've got some... Uh, people here, da, 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 da. somebody is going to get blocked, I think. Okay. Yeah. We're going to block somebody. Just give me one second. I don't know who you are, but, um, ah, uh, we'll just remove it. Okay. Nice comments. Okay. There we go. So what we're doing today is we're going to look at the Kia Rondo. Now, if you're from the States, we'll talk about this in a, again, in about a minute and a half. We'll talk about that. And we're going to compare it to the Kia Seltos. Now, we've been doing a lot of sort of high technology stuff. We pulled in the brand new uh, Kia K5 recently. We've done a lot of video on that. Talked about a lot of high technology. These cars are a little bit less technology. And we think they're, I think they're a good mix of what's here. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this car. So we're going to talk about that in a second. And we're going to compare if this one makes sense. So, um, for, for you, for, for what you're looking for. So here we go. Real quick with news. we got 45 seconds to go before we get to that three-minute mark. Uh, Kia K5 GT line in ghost gray. We've got one. I believe it is in compound or will be in compound in the next day or so. Uh, we're hoping to have that by the end of the week. Um, so that is a next level of the Kia 5, the next trim up of the Kia K5 that we have. Uh, we'll be talking about that this week. And I'm open to your suggestions. I've got a bunch of ideas for this week, but I kind of want to allow you guys to take some suggestions because... Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of other stuff. Oh, and you guys said happy fifth anniversary to me. Turns out I misspoke yesterday, and I knew that as soon as I finished the video. I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't my fifth year anniversary here. Next week, Tuesday, is my fifth anniversary here, which is good because obviously nobody watched yesterday's video and uh, nobody from here did. So if anybody from here is watching uh, the video, next Tuesday is my fifth year here. So we'll see if anybody remembers. All right, 10 of you are on, three of you have given me likes. Real quick, I know if you're just joining us at the three-minute mark, do me a favor, hit the like button. It costs you nothing, helps me out. Um, you know, help a guy out. It really doesn't cost you anything. All right, here we go. So what we're talking about today is there's a sort of a two-part version of this video. If you're moving from a Kia, from a previous Kia product, we're going to talk about why the Kia Seltos or current Kias may be worth upgrading. Now, the car I used to do that is this Kia Rondo. And the reason I did that is because I've owned two Kia Rondos, the previous ones. Let's call it the, by the truth, the kind of uglier ones. And then this car came out. I never owned one of these, but the Kia Rondo was one of the best vehicles we ever made, and it never went to the United States, which makes it a bit of a unique car here. We actually sold a bunch of these here at Brantford Kia, and I quite like them. So we're going to talk about this particular car. We're going to talk about, it's just kind of interesting, and you may not see it. And uh, we're going to talk about why some of these older technologies, why you may want to move to this newer car. And uh, if you like this car, you may like that car. And you guys can tell me if I'm on the right track or not. Now, here's the thing. We never actually received a proper replacement for the Kia Rondo. The Kia Rondo here is a really unique car. It was excellent in many, many ways. Um, and they brought in the Kia Nero around the time that this car finished. And we called the Nero its replacement. But the Nero wasn't its replacement. The Nero was a, um, a hybrid. And this is not a hybrid, obviously. This is just a regular uh, car. And we're going to talk about this car. So we're going to go through this car, which is, again, one of the best Kias ever made in its time. And we're going to talk about why I think it's awesome, why I think it's one of the best we ever had. And we're going to compare it to that, the Kia Celto. So what we're talking about here is the LX all-wheel drive. This is the um, Kia Celto's LX all-wheel drive. I think it's the right one to compare it to. 
obviously we've done a lot of video on the higher trim levels with all the technology. And if you really want to step up from a car like this to a car with a whole lot of technology, I'm going to suggest you go to the EX or above Kia Seltos. You'll really be impressed. However, if you like this car and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, then maybe that's the right car. And one of the reasons Rondo buyers may not want to spend a whole lot of money is because this car was always tremendous value. You, If you had a Rondo buyer, you knew they cared about great value. Um, and that's what this car offered. So this is the LX model. There was a few different trim levels. There was right up to an EX Luxury, which would really be the equivalent of an SX today. Um, and we're going to talk about this car. So here's some things I liked about it. You can see it's kind of minivan shaped, but it had a rear... Uh, door that sort of opened like this. Now the Chevy Orlando is another car that never went to the United States, even though they called it an American city name. It was a direct competitor to this. Uh, Mazda MX or Mazda Five uh, was another competitor to this. It had sliding van style doors that was similar size to this, but that was kind of it. Everything else you're comparing this to a crossover. So some people said, "Oh, don't worry, the Rondo buyers will move to a Sportage," but I would argue that when this Rondo was in the showroom. With this grill and this look, it actually sat next to a Sportage, and people chose the Rondo over the Sportage for a reason. Um, we'll show you why, but I just think the Sportage is not a direct replacement. They could have bought a Sportage at the same time they bought this, and they didn't. They couldn't buy was a Celto. So we're going to take a look here. What we've got here is uh, this car has a 2-liter engine, makes 164 horsepower. It is basically the Kia Soul powertrain of the time. Now, the car I'm comparing it to, the new car is the Kia Seltos, which is, again, sort of the what people have called the all-wheel drive Kia Soul today. And it has the same engine and transmission combination in this car as the current Kia Soul. Now, you're going to be down on power. This one has 164 horsepower. That one has 147 horsepower. However, the current Kia Soul is faster than the last Kia Soul to 60 because of its transmission, the IVT transmission. So you, even though you're down on power, you're probably similar on speed. Uh, this is not a rocket by any means. This was sort of an efficient way to get into a uh, smaller people mover, but not quite a minivan. Now they did have these available with seven passengers. We're gonna take a look at cargo space in a second, but you didn't have to um, get it with seven passengers and this one happens to be a five passenger. So let's take a look inside. We're gonna start in the, here's where we're gonna go today. We're gonna go driver's seat to driver's seat. And then this car is really unique in the cargo area. We're gonna go cargo area to cargo area, rear seat space to rear seat space, all of which you can see drastic improvements into the Seltos. So we're going to take a look in here. And, and uh, one thing I want to point out, this car had great long roof rails. I'm a kayaker. That was one of the reasons I love this car. I took my uh, kayaks on the roof uh, very easily on the Rondos. All right, we'll jump back inside here. Here we go, 2016. Just in case you want to buy this car, it is actually for sale right now. 12981, you can give us a call, 509-304-6542. All right, let's jump in. Keyed car. So I took the Seltos and made sure it was a keyed car as well. You can see we had a little different dash layout back then. We went with the idea of information in the middle. Uh, now what they've done is they moved that temperature gauge down in here, the fuel gauge down in there, and they've enlarged this screen on a lot of our cars. But we were kind of heading that way already. Now you've got controls for that screen on the steering wheel. What's interesting is this is your cruise control here. Now what we do is we make better use of this space, put your cruise control on the one side, and we have the information display over here. You can see right now we have a steering wheel button here. On the current Kia Seltos, the EX and above, that would be your lane follow assist. Helps the car steer itself, keep it centered in lane. On this car, what it does is it changes the steering mode to comfort, to normal, and to sport. So you can change the steering mode the way it feels. Now it's not going to be sporty, sporty feeling, but it'll stiffen up the steering and you can do that right from the steering wheel. Over here you had your Bluetooth controls over here, and your audio controls over here. Again, we've simplified this, brought this into here, and it's actually a much smarter layout. Uh, but the idea is you had steering wheel controls for everything you needed. You still have that in the current Kia. Over down here, we had some controls down here. Active Eco was actually the early drive mode. So you had an Eco mode or a regular mode. Now we've got more drive modes. We'll show you that in the Seltos. Moving over here, you have a stereo that they should have continued to build, but they didn't. Uh, some things that are kind of cool here. You have Bluetooth streaming audio and you have Sirius XM satellite radio. Now, if you have Sirius satellite radio from us, you can get three months for, if you buy a car with us, if you buy a car from us with satellite radio, you can get three months of free satellite radio. But here's the thing. This is an LX model. We do not have an LX model anymore other than the Rio that still has available Sirius satellite radio. So you have to move up in trim lines to get that satellite radio. This also happens to have a CD player. 
if you have CDs and you're looking to get a new car, you better start uh, saving those CD music, ripping them onto a uh, audio file on your phone somehow, because uh, you're not going to have a CD player for lo- much longer in cars. They're going the way of the cassette player and uh, other uh, players. Down here, you have a very unique feature that we don't have anymore. This will hold a card, maybe a parking card or a key card, that kind of thing. I don't know why it's there, but that's uh, something we had. Manual air climate control system, very simple, easy to use, push buttons, uh, you know, same idea as what we do right now. Down here, you have the same idea as what we do now as well. You have two 12-volt ports and a USB port in the center. Now, that is just really charging ports. Um, there is a way to connect music, but it's not as intuitive. Just use your Bluetooth nowadays. Down here, you have what I like to call rump roasters, heated seats in the driver and passenger side, three levels of heated seats. That's what you would expect. Parking sensors, the backup beepers. Why do we have those? Because there was no parking or there was no rear view camera. So it'll still be progressively quicker as you uh, approach something. Now, I will say this is an oddly designed car. When you look in here, you've got some weird looking windows in here. But it, the visibility in this car, and it's not going to show on camera really well. The visibility in this car is actually very, very good. You can see all the way around quite well. Um, so it was actually kind of a unique car. While we're looking up, let's just keep looking up. You've got kind of a cool thing. You have a sunglass. passengers in this car, which is kind of a cool thing. Coming down, you've got uh, your standard wiper controls, very similar to what we have now. Automatic headlights, which is what we have now as well. A very comfortable seating position. So as we jump in here, I want to just show you one thing that they do well on the front seats. But we're going to talk about rear seats in a minute. The height of this seat is perfect for a lot of people. People like getting in and out of the Kia Soul because it's just the perfect height. Uh, you don't have to climb up into an SUV. You don't have to climb down into a car. This seating position is perfect. And the seats are, I wouldn't call them narrower, but they have that sporty, big, uh, bolstered side. So they kind of hug you nicely. Um, it feels very good. They've got a nice long seat on the bottom. It's a very comfortable seating position. Your knees are sort of square, and uh, you can create a lot of room like that. So excellent car for driving position, comfort. Uh, pretty good for efficiency. I will say this car was rated for, I believe, they say 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. If I'm remembering correctly, yeah, 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers there in the center of your screen. Um, I will say that it was a little harder to get that in this car than, for instance, our new cars. A lot of our new cars, I can quite easily exceed the mileage ratings, whereas this one I'd have to drive carefully just to get the mileage ratings. So uh, that's that. Now, keep in mind everything you just saw as we hop in the driver's seat of a 2021 Kia Seltos. Now, this is the LX model fairly stripped down compared to something like an EX, which is extremely well equipped. But let's just take a look. Jumping in here, it is still a key start car. If you're familiar with key start, that's uh, going to be familiar here. Jumping in here, you can see what I was talking about. Those two gauges that were up top, we've moved them down here. We've enlarged the screen a little bit here. Uh, we'll talk about drive modes in a minute, but you've got some information in there in the center. Coming over here, you lose the satellite radio that we talked about before. What you do gain, though, is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, and, of course, this huge screen here is the same size as the Kia Stinger, the same clarity as the Kia Stinger. You can see the lines in the floor there. An excellent screen. You still have Bluetooth streaming audio, and you have HD radio. So if it's an FM station that's HD radio, you're going to get very good sound out of here. Uh, we're going to scroll down a little further. You still have manual climate controls, a uh, little different. The other one had a lot more push buttons. This one has a dial to replace some of the push buttons, but you've got hot, cold, and the fan speed as well there. Um, some nice mirrored black, just sort of updated trim down here. Uh, looking down a little further, let's get the gear shift out of the way for the video. Uh, same idea exactly. Remember we talked about two 12-volt ports and a USB? Well, now you've got a USB, a USB, and a 12-volt. So, you know, practical, that's what you need. There is a little spot to store your phone on higher trim levels. That spot up here has a wireless charge pad on this one it does not drive modes are now down here instead of way over here on this side over here so this is a more logical spot and the reason they're there is because you have a better choice of drive modes you have smart sport and normal smart is where you want to keep it i'll show you just in the dash here um there we go so if we go to normal we're going to go to smart if it's smart right now it can it basically is your eco mode the one complaint people had about eco mode is as you tried to get on the highway for instance you would accelerate and it would resist the downshift the smart mode basically solves that problem it gives you the great economy of the eco mode but if you need to get into the throttle it sort of senses what you're doing and it figures it out and you have a little bar graph that will go left to right 
uh, on that econ to dynamic to tell you uh, sort of where it's headed. So you can see right now in the smart mode, it's, it's normal. Uh, a lot of times you put in the smart mode, you'll just see eco and, uh, you know, or other modes like that, sport if you drive hard. Uh, so very kind of easy to use and a good location right there. Gear shift. It is an IVT transmission. That means when you go to the manual shift side of things, you get eight gear ratios where you can choose them yourself. On the Rondo, when you did that, you had six gear ratios. You also have heated seats here. There are no backup beepers, but again, you do have that backup, um, uh, the backup uh, camera. Over here, this one happens to be all-wheel drive. Now, you can get this car in front-wheel drive if you wanted to go direct comparison. I just think that for what you're moving into, probably going to be a similar price point. Um, you're going to move into an all-wheel drive, and that makes some sense. You also have hill descent control, so a little bit more off-road. Now, I will say, ooh, those heated seats warm up nicely. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's just go to the steering wheel. We'll jump out in a second here. Steering wheel, you can see how we've done our cruise control over here and the menu controls for that center over here. Uh, your menu controls are right there. So we've simplified things by putting everything in here. And same thing over here. Uh, you've got all the same audio controls you had over here. You can also talk to your car. And then you've got your Bluetooth controls right there. Same looking automatic headlights over here. Same looking automatic wipers over there. One thing you do have here, which some people complain about, but I think it's a great feature, is the car is capable of turning itself off at stoplights and instantly starting back up. Um, it does save you some fuel. fuel that's been sort of proven. And... Um, it is something that uh, I, I don't mind. I think it works quite well. So that's the driver's seat. Now, I will tell you, if you're looking at a Kia um, Seltos and you come from something like a Rondo, the seat is just a slight little bit higher, but it is just as easy to get in and out of. And it's actually a fairly similar driving environment. Nice small steering wheel, kind of comfortable. So front seat to front seat, you can see the similarities. You can see the rear ends of these cars are very different. This is a much shorter vehicle. When I say much shorter, it's about six inches shorter than this vehicle over here. Let's take a look at this side over here. We're going to look at both rear ends. There's my teddy bear. He's my trunk measurement tool. He'll be in there. We're missing a lot of people. I don't know. We got 19 people on. I'm cool with that. So you can see this is much more of a SUV look. This is much more of a, almost a minivan wagon style look. So we're going to take a look at trunk sizes here because one of the reasons you bought the Kia Rondo was because of the trunk. Now, if you were like me, you had two seven-passenger. I've had two Rondos. I had seven-passenger Kia Rondos. Um, the rear seats essentially from this line forward swung up. They weren't very big. They weren't very comfortable. Uh, they were probably not very safe. Uh, but what's cool is I used to be able to stick my mother-in-law in the trunk, and she used to climb in there, and it was kind of fun to see her hop out of the restaurant. And um, But she, you could take up to seven people in this car. Um, so that was something this one that this was available to this car, but most people never use the rear seats other than for very short times. And they had, if they had the five passenger, they had all sorts of underfloor storage here and they had this underfloor storage here. The Rondo has a good sized trunk. It was always the reason we sold this car. If you fold the seats down, we're talking class leading space. However, most of us had the seats up the whole time. And what's interesting is the Seltos is only three inches shorter from the corner of the seat to back here and only one inch less width in that widest part of the trunk. Let's throw Teddy Bear in there and you can see what we're talking about because cargo leaders don't matter as much as actually seeing a representation. So there's Teddy in the back. Now I will say one thing. These rear seats can tilt many different positions. They can be square upright or they can tilt back towards us uh, in many more positions than the Seltos. That can allow you to carry a big box maybe nice and easily. But you can see Teddy's got some pretty good room in there. Uh, he's pretty comfortable in here, and he had a lot of cargo space in front of him. A lot of people, if you had the seven passenger, the answer was to move up, and you need a seven passenger, the answer was to move to the Sorento or the Sedona. Now let's pop open the back over here. I've done two things in this one. Do we get a teddy if we buy a car from you? Uh, <laughs> you can't have my teddy, but sure, I'm willing to throw a teddy bear in. I uh, just got to come buy one. All right, so the Seltos has a couple different things. The seats can fold one more sec, one more click back for comfort. So not as many settings, but they can still do that. I have lowered the floor. You can see it normally sits up here, but I can easily lower the floor. And that's just to give me a little bit more maximum cargo space. So keep in mind, we are dealing with a six inch shorter vehicle. We only have a three inch shorter trunk floor and a one inch narrower seat or trunk area in the large thing. So this is a much smaller car. However, you can see Teddy is, whoops, come on camera, sorry about that guys. Teddy's pretty comfortable in there as well. So a lot of the competitors to the Seltos have almost a non-existent trunk. 
And if you're moving from a car like that, you're stepping up a, l- a little bit in technology, but you're not getting into anything crazy that you don't understand. Uh, this particular car is not capable of steering itself like most of our Kias are. Everything the EX and above is capable of steering itself to keep it centered in the lane. The Rondo never steered itself, and maybe you don't want that feature. This car doesn't have that feature. The trunk space for a smaller car is very similar. The price point is going to be similar to what you paid for your Rondo, only you're going to get all-wheel drive this time, and the trunk is pretty good. Now, because I have a habit of losing teddy bear, I'm going to take him out of here. The other thing I want to show you is the rear seat space, and then I'm going to take some questions here. Rear seat is one area Kia has improved, and I'm going to start in the Rondo because when we sold the Rondo, we talked about how it was great for passengers, great for for, uh, comfort, and uh, both pass the teddy sprawl test, exactly. Here's what I want to show you about the Rondo. You have a couple cool features that they didn't do on any other Kia, and underneath this floor mat here is a little tab there, and if I lift that little tab, you will see there's an underfloor storage space there, which is pretty cool. We didn't do that, and you can't get that in the Celtos. Now, I'm going to hop in here for a second. I'm going to show you headroom as I flip the camera around here. All right, headroom, immense. For a small car, uh, excellent, like very, very good. The armrest right here, whoops, if I can show you that, falls perfectly to where it should. Let me just switch the camera. Falls perfectly to where it should, where you can see that my arm there. Now, put the armrest away. Here's the problem with cars of the past and some a lot of our competitive cars. We sold this as a great car for families, great car for comfort, great car for real estate agents to take their guests out. Look at my legs. I'm off the seat from here on up. This is still what we used to consider a comfortable seat. We showed you in the K5, my seat was, my leg was flat. Come on, camera. My leg was flat in the K5. I am bending my ankle very uncomfortably to be able to do that. This is how I'm sitting, which means all of this is off of the seat. This is not going to be a great, comfortable seat in the long term. And we talked about moving into Rondos and uh, other cars like this, SUVs, because it was a real comfortable back seat. Well, I'd rather lose a little headroom and have my legs sitting on the seat because that's going to be comfort to me. And that's one thing that Rondo does not have, yet we used to think it was a really good, comfortable car. Now, moving forward here, show you my knees. Knee room here is excellent. Uh, very good for a smaller car. You have vents here and a 12-volt port down there as well. But that seat, again, we used to tell you that that was a really comfortable seat because it was. It was class competitive, and it was a very comfortable seat. Now, check out in the Seltos. We had the same thing in the K5, same thing in Celto, same thing in the Kia Soul, same thing in almost every car we have. As I sit down here, whoops, let me just flip the camera around. Sorry about that, guys. As I sit down here, uh, there we go. I am flat to the seat, right to the edge, and I'm comfortable. So that's a huge difference with the Celtos. Now, do I lose some headroom to do it? Yeah, I do. But you know what? I've got plenty of headroom, uh, not immense top hat wearing headroom, but I have, you know, probably class leading headroom or near it. And I'm going to be comfortable driving across the country with my leg flat to the seat. So kind of something cool because we used to talk about the Rondo as a great back seat. And this is better. Rondo was kind of a small Sedona. Absolutely. Here we go with legroom here. Again, six inch shorter vehicle. I've got virtually the same amount of space with my knees there. Uh, this particular one doesn't have vents or ports here. If you move up one trim level, you can get that. Uh, I don't know that that's a huge concern in this uh, vehicle. Some people think it is. And again, you can get that just not at this trim level. So rear seat and cargo space, again, the reason we talked about the Rondo, the reason we sold the Rondo was, wow, the cargo versatility of that car was phenomenal. And now we move into something that is a class smaller, six inches shorter, it's a little bit narrower, uh, height's actually very similar, but it hardly has more, it definitely has more ground clearance. And you end up with near the same cargo space, you end up with probably, arguably a more comfortable rear seat. Very similar cargo space or uh, driver's seat, more nimble vehicle, less horsepower, but uh, I think equal or better fuel efficiency in real world. And you've got basically the same speed because that all that uh, IVT transmission helps you with acceleration. So if you're thinking about an older Kia, Kia moving to a new Kia, the LX models of a lot of our cars may be a great place to start because you're not going to be overwhelmed by technology. You have nice things like the bigger screen. Uh, the backup camera on a full-size screen, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, most of our cars have that, uh, even at the LX level. Uh, but you don't have to really change from what you've got as far as understanding what you have. So that is why I think the Seltos is the only replacement we have for the Rondo. 
All right. Is there anybody here that had a question that maybe I missed? If there's something I missed, um, looks like it was mostly just comments. Yeah, we're good. I overwhelmed you. If anybody has a question about these two cards, I'd be happy to show you. Um, and we'll talk lighting in one second, and then we'll finish it up. Uh, I'm not sure what that says. So we're just going to put somebody in a timeout because I'm not sure what that was. And I know earlier there was an issue. Okay. So we're going to show you lighting here as well because what we've got here is a very similar lighting. And the Rondo had great lighting for its day. Again, if you're looking at a used car, um, this is a really good option because one of the things the Rondo had well, even in the generation before this, they moved to projector beam headlights very early. Projector beam headlights, as you know, they are the nice sharp cutoff headlights. Now we've moved on our higher trim cars to LEDs, but this one you can see has a very good um, bright light there. You have fog lights as well, which I think I turned off. Let me just try to turn them on again. There we go. Yes, there we go. So fog lights down there, which will give some width to the light. You can see they are not the sharp cutoff, so they come brighter. Oops, camera's going down. They get brighter, but not that sharp, sharp cutoff. Uh, on the Celtos, let's take a second to turn those lights on. Rondo came out first in 2007. I believe that's right. 2006 or 7, it came out as a previous body style. This one came out in 2014, the one I just showed you a second ago. And the one in 2014 was um, never made it to the United States. So here we've got uh, your uh, simple LED lighting right there. In the higher trim Celtos, you have that LED continue right through there. So I just want to show you that LED lighting even on this LX trim. But I do want to show you the headlights. And to do that, I just got to turn the key a tiny bit. Forgot to do that. Whoops. There we go. Oops. Almost turned the windshield wiper fluid on. There we go. As we look at this car, same idea with the headlights. So this is why the Ronda was kind of ahead of its time. Projector beam headlights, for all I know, they could be the exact same light. Very good sharp cutoff and fog lights that do the exact same thing. Sharp cutoff lights right there. So you can see here, sharp cutoff there on the fog lights. The headlights are similar. I don't know if you can see that line, but then again, the Rondo sharp cutoff headlights there as well. Let's take a look at the backlights just while we're here. Just simple filled the filled the area kind of lights and the same thing over here sort of simple fill the area you do have separate signal lights that are red and uh, that is how that comes so again if you are interested in upgrading your kia and you don't want anything too crazy but you'd like something nicer something maybe a little more fuel efficient uh, maybe something all-wheel drive something like the kia k5 which is our optimum replacement they're all-wheel drive something like kia seltos you can move from a rondo to a seltos uh, improve your fuel efficiency in real world, as far as I'm concerned, and also get that all-wheel drive. So that's an option for you. And you get that nice little upgrade for the screens, other things, same easy-to-drive car. Rondo looks dated. Rondo is dated. The Rondo is no longer sold new. This is our used car. It's a 2016. Uh, when the Nero came out, the Rondo phased itself out. I just felt like the Nero was never the true replacement for the Rondo. And some people said they could move to the Sportage. Like I said earlier in the video, this car was in the showroom next to the Sportage, and people chose this over the Sportage. I think the real value pick for a Rondo buyer is the Seltos. And uh, that may not be for everybody. Like I said, if you need the space, we've got lots of options that way. But the Seltos is just a really intriguing, really good buy. And interestingly, the Seltos is expected to be our number one selling vehicle next year here in Canada. So uh, we're really going to be planning on putting that car front and center for us. All right. Things just a matter of fixing or tweaking a few things in the Rondo. Uh, since it started several things for the other key models. Yeah, the Rondo really, I mean, it didn't sell in the States. That's why they didn't bring it there. And when something doesn't sell in the States, it doesn't last long in Canada usually. Uh, but we did well with that car. And like I said, I've owned two of these. The previous model, which was much uglier. Uh, but these are really nice cars to drive, really comfortable cars. But again, you saw rear seat space. We used to talk about that being excellent. We used to talk about rear seat comfort. We've really stepped it up with some of those little things that other manufacturers aren't thinking about. And that's why Kias do, are doing really well. All right, we aren't going to go too much longer. Somebody asked about this 2021 Sorento. Uh, any news on when the 2021 Sorento is coming? We've been waiting patiently. Uh, the Sorento is coming out this fall. We have some training on it coming up again soon. We've done a bunch of training on it. Uh, we've got at least 10 on order. We don't have an exact date yet. So the K5 was going to come first. The Sorento was going to come later. Uh, we're just receiving K5s now. Like literally, we only have one. We have another one that we could get here this week. Uh, but the Sorento is still a couple months away. Well, I say a couple months. I would say November, December, as far as I know. 
Um, that's when that's coming. Sedona is next on the list. It'll be here in the spring as a 2022 model. Uh, we're going to continue to roll out a lot of new vehicles. Someone said, are there any plans to offer the Seltos as an EV? Uh, not that I know of. I would assume that it would be a generational change. In other words, the next generation could be made an EV. Kia is working on a ton of EV products. So there will be hybrids. There will be PHEVs. There will be EVs coming up. Uh, a, lot of H, a lot of electrified product coming up. Why we're going to? Sorry, I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, S model is a top seller. Sorry, which uh, Ray Davis? Are you talking about the the um, Seltos? The Seltos is expected to be our number one seller. Which trim? I'm not really sure. We're selling the EX model here. Uh, quite a bit of uh, those. The this LX in my mind. If you're looking at the Seltos, um, the LX might be perfect for you if you just love your older car and don't want too much changes. If you are looking at moving to the next generation of Kia. I suggest going one step up from the LX all-wheel drive here. Uh, you get an EX all-wheel drive, and you get a lot more safety features in that car, including a lot of the advanced collision avoidance features. Uh, this car still has blind spot monitoring, so it has some extra things in that way. But you start moving into that uh, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, those kind of things, and they're really good. Is a Kia badge really changing next year? So <laughs> we found out in the media like you guys did. We were told... Uh, in a Kia meeting, no, no, it's not changing. And then we read in the media, oh, yeah, it's changing. And that was literally a day or two apart. So, yes, it's changing. Uh, I don't have any details of when because um, as far as we were told, it wasn't changing. But we know it is. And uh, so we don't know when, but we know it will be. All right. So, the, yeah, the Seltos, the EX model would be the best-selling one. Just answering your question there, Ray. Um, in my books, as far as I know from what I've seen, the EX. Um, and, again, I like that LX model. But, like I said, if you are considering Seltos, um, like I said, the reason to move to that is because it's similar to what you had, uh, just some nice general upgrades. Uh, but there's this generational change that's going on now with Kia vehicles, where a lot of people moved from a vehicle like this to technology like that, just a nice little update. That generational change comes in at the EX level. When you start getting that lane keep assist, lane follow assist technology, um, that changes the way you drive. It's safer. It's got collision avoidance things. Um, it's a really good thing to have. And that, to me, if you can stretch for it, go for that. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with either of these vehicles as well. Also, LED lighting is a thing that I'm a proponent of. Uh, a little harder to get in the Seltos until you get to the EX Premium or above. Uh, every single Optima has it. Uh, many of the Souls have it as well. Uh, our LED lighting is phenomenal. And uh, so, again, if you're stretching, those are some things to keep an eye on. Uh, if you just want simple like you had before, uh, then we've got some new technology there as well. All right, I think we're going to leave it right there, 32 and a half minutes in. Again, I probably did a mistake as far as nobody's interested in this car. They weren't interested enough to buy it when it was new, uh, except we did sell a lot of Kia here, uh, Kia Brantford Kia here. So um, thanks for dealing, listening to my uh, pitch on why the Rondo is one of the best Kias ever made. Just great package, great value at the time. But wow, have we moved forward. Uh, like I said, nice upgrades here and a really nice upgrades when you move up trim level. So there we go. Thanks everybody for watching. we got 24 people on 21 people gave me likes. So I do appreciate that. Um, I expect this video to underperform and I'm okay with that. Uh, it was fun doing this. We have some other things coming up this week. If you have a suggestion, I'm totally willing to take your suggestion, especially for tomorrow, uh, Thursday or Friday. I'm hoping to get another K five in here. And when the next K five GT line shows up, we're going to be working on that for a bit. So, uh, if you have suggestions on what you want to see in the live video bay, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. Thanks, everybody, for watching. It's been fun, and we'll see you again tomorrow.